Dear ladies, dear gentlemen, we heard some great words about how it should look like in Slovakia, and I have to agree with many of the previous speakers. But I still think that Slovakia is not—it is not such a great problem that we are facing a great tragedy because we are a country that uh, has the least amount of uh, debt within the Europe eurozone. So if we if we take together all debts, uh, then we have. Uh, quite helpful banks uh, before they started to hand out uh, consumer credits. We will s look at that later. But I'd like to look at the whole problem in a different way because I think the problem is in the global trend, not just in Slovakia and its policies and unsystematic steps that the government is uh, taking. I think the problem is much more extensive and much more uh, deep within the Eurozone and within the whole world. So let's uh, get to it. My first question is, if you let me to give you a question, uh, how long does a crisis take? How long does a financial crisis take? Two, three years? Five years? Yes, exactly. Now in June, we will have the fifth anniversary of the collapse of uh, some uh, funds uh, because they, they um, they lost value and it is something that is a reality because after great fun uh, there was uh, sobering and when the party was over we got sober and we saw it on this, ba this bank and it was um, demonstrated uh, well the, it was um, we felt it in economy some time afterwards uh, from then on, we've been facing the crisis, and globally, we uh, politicians spent 12 billion, 12 um, trillion of dollars to resolve the crisis, and this is quite a quite a good solution, and many many people agree with this. But we are still just treading water, and this is the image where we are right now this horse that should be pulling the world forward uh, is stuck and maybe we will need to spend more trillions and nothing is going on so I feel that much more will have to be done and if you've been following uh, policies uh, politics in the eurozone you see that the greatest problem is uh, that many European governments are starting to um, deal with the term of growth, economic growth, how to support and drive the growth, because saving has not uh, been um, proved to be successful. You see the French president who is trying to lower the age of pension, he's trying to um, hire new uh, civil servants that will drive, econ drive economic growth. On the other hand, there's uh, Merkel who thinks that we need to save. And this is the great uh, disagreement we have in the European uh, economy because I think that we cannot do one or the other. We need to make a choice. Uh, presently, it seems that uh, saving uh, just had hit the dead end and it is being negative because we see that in Greece because Greeks are trying to save and their GDP will go down by 20% compared to the maximum in 2008. So a common politician will tell you this is the cycle, the spiral of deflation because uh, government expenses means lower demand, lower GDP, lower income of uh, enterprises. That means saving in private uh, sphere. That means uh, low, higher unemployment um, and greater cuts and so this is a vicious circle so it seems that Germany is not bright and saving money does not help at all is it really like that I think it's not really because because you can see it in what what you can see is in Greece is that this picture will be seen more often not just in Greece maybe in other countries because the state is trying to replace the missing money of the people who started to save money we've seen some graph of uh, how much people and corporations uh, spend money their expenses uh, just froze and they're trying to save money. Saving money in the private sphere and the corporate sphere and uh, presently the mantra of politics is that the government must uh, keep up with those uh, savings because uh, 
otherwise the spiral of deflations will start to turn us and the, the state has several options how to how to do this uh, they can increase taxes and this is not a really optimum uh, behavior because it just means that we take money up to one pocket to another pocket and one half of the money is spent on administration which doesn't make sense the second issue is that we can drive economical growth and by more uh, making more debt but what happened when we take a look at ratings of European countries is that it is not that possible to make more debt because we've hit the wall and it is a very negative factor. And this is probably the most important graph that I do have in my head. And this is marginal uh, expensive of uh, expenses of new state debt. A few decades ago, uh, it was true that if the country went into debt, it was great because it supported the economy and it started up the economy. But uh, it seems that any uh, more debt will be will have negative effect on economic growth. And where is the problem? I think the problem is very substantial. It is not a problem if the government spends one percent or hundred hundred million here and there. The problem is in the thinking of people, in the thinking of politicians and economists. It is maybe much deeper. So I will mention one significant thing is that we are living in a world where a great majority of even rightist politi politicians think in the terms of Keynes, because his uh, great mantra of uh, was to uh, was to uh, refuse size law of uh, cleansing of the market and refuse the notion that uh, the the uh, market is uh, self-regulating, so he thought that government must replace um, savings of private individuals and companies. And we see a few decades after that something like this is not correct. And if you take a step back and take a look at uh, what should the, what politicians should be doing, uh, well, because five years of crisis without uh, moving even one inch further means that probably thinking or the basis or the philosophy of economy is incorrect. And I would like to um, proceed to, to what uh, Keynes was trying to criticize, and that is Jean-Baptiste Say. And that's the guy who came with this idea we need to come back to. And the idea is that manufacture is the, is the source of uh, demand. Only once we produce, then we get demand. And uh, governments are trying to stimulate demand. And that is the fight between uh, Holland and Merkel that states must create demand. No, uh, demand must only come from new production. It is very easy because when I produce something, I'm trying to offer it to some other people. And by this, I stimulate growth and this makes economy go forward. So it is production that creates um, money, not state expenses, not state expenses. And we are uh, facing the thing that we need more um, social um, benefits and uh, we need uh, to make people that people we need to make sure that people uh, live on the decent level and but I'm afraid that this road from the economical uh, point of view is uh, unsubstantiated at the only objective where it leads is uh, higher inflation and a hidden redistribution of uh, the wealth of society I think uh, the correct road is toward driving uh, production, but not through state expenses, but through making rules, because once a state is capable of making meaningful rules and enforcing them, it is the greatest thing a state can do for uh, the entire business environment and for production of this environment. And that is why, once again, uh, the main idea I'm trying to emphasize is that we are facing, we are facing the time of great changes and great problems and many of us do not realize that even the most in, the most uh, well-known world politicians do not realize that and now it is time and maybe we've passed up the time of uh, seeing whether the present day politics makes sense or not I don't think it does and the sooner we start uh, supporting production and demand by creating uh, systematic steps and rules, then we can start making wealth. Thank you very much.